In the first part of this lesson, we'll cover the basics of displaying messages using the message box function. We don't need any particular files for this example, so let's start by opening Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can then head into the developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor, insert a module into the project, and then we can create a new subroutine called Simple Message. You can display a message on screen using the message box function. Let's have a look in the IntelliSense list if I press Ctrl and Space and then look for an abbreviation of the word message box, MSG box. I can then type in a space to display the tooltip, which lists out the five parameters of the message box. We're only going to consider the first parameter called prompt. It's the only compulsory parameter. The other four are optional. We'll get to those in later parts of this lesson. The prompt is essentially the literal text that you want to see appear on the message. And this can be absolutely any piece of text. If you open some double quotes, you can type in pretty much whatever you like. If you have a favourite inspirational quote, perhaps you could write that in. Or if you just want to type in some rude words, that works too. Uh, your message might be related to some current affairs, maybe Brexit is looming. Or if you watched the Super Bowl last weekend, maybe something like, oh God, not the Patriots again. Um, failing all that, if you have absolutely no inspiration whatsoever, you could just go with a fairly boring but traditional hello world. And then when you close the double quotes, hit enter, and that's all you really need to make a message box appear. To see the message appear on screen, we simply need to run the subroutine. So let's do that now by clicking the play button at the top of the screen. We return to Excel and we see the message box appearing right in the middle with the phrase we've entered typed into it. It's important to note at this point that your code is paused while your message box is displayed. So if I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor briefly, if there were any other instructions below my message box, these would not have been executed yet. The code doesn't continue until the message box is closed. Um, the message box also prevents you from doing things in the Visual Basic Editor. Hopefully, as you can see here, as I'm clicking away, nothing is responding. So if I switch back to the Excel window, I can click the OK button, my code will proceed, and I reach the end of the subroutine. Now you're not limited to only displaying literal text that you type into your code, such as the phrase hello world. You can use a message box to display the value of many other things in VBA. Let's have a quick extra subroutine called show a property. And I'd like to use a message box in this example that displays the name of the current workbook. So I'm going to use the message box function and then I'm going to set the prompt to be a reference to the this workbook dot name property. So the name property of the workbook, of course, shows the name, which currently in my case is book one. So when I run the subroutine this time, I will see the current name of the workbook. But of course, this will be different if your workbook has a different name or when I save the workbook, that will also change the name of the file and will therefore affect what value appears on the message box itself. We can also return the results of functions and display those in a message box. Let's have another new subroutine called show a function or show a function result if you prefer. And what we'll do in this case is display the value of the date function. So let's go for another message box and return the, the result of the date function. If I run this subroutine, once again, we'll see another message appear with today's date. If I click OK, you could also choose to concatenate your function result with another piece of literal text. So let's extend our message so that it says the date is, followed by whatever today's date is. In order to do that, I'm going to write in some literal text in some double quotes. So I'm going to say the date is, and I'm deliberately leaving a space before I close the double quotes there. What I then need to do is concatenate this string literal with the result of the date function. And to concatenate things in VBA, I can use the ampersand character. So a shift and the number seven on my keyboard. When I run this subroutine again, this time I'll see that my phrase, the date is, is put in front of the actual result of the date function. If you have a particularly long message to display, you may prefer to construct it and store it in a variable and then simply pass the variable into the message box later. Let's have another new subroutine. This one I'll call using variables. If you followed along with the previous module, you'll be very familiar with using variables at this point. I'm going to declare a variable called my message or an abbreviation of that, which can hold a string value. Then I'd like to construct a phrase and store the result in my message. So I'm going to say my message is equal to, and then some literal text. I'm going to say the current user is, 
and then I'm going to concatenate that with the result of the function that returns the username of the person running the code. So I can do that using a function called environ, which is short for environment, and then in some parentheses and double quotes, I can ask for the username of the current environment. So that variable will store the result of that expression, joining those two pieces of text together. I can then finally display the result of that in a message box by calling the message box function, and then this time passing in the value of the my message variable. If I run that subroutine now, I'll find out who's running the uh, the code. And oh, look, it's me, Andrew.gould. There we go. So I can click OK now to end that subroutine.